There's a new AI model that doesn't just learn language, it learns it like your brain does. It builds its own little clusters for verbs, nouns, and meaning, just like the ones scientists see in brain scans. And the craziest part is that it does this using one simple rule. Let's talk about it. So, the star of the show is a brand new system called Topo LM, short for Topographic Language Model. It comes out of FFL's Neuro AI Laboratory in Switzerland, and if you hang around the machine learning scene, you'll know FFL churns out heavy hitters. The lead guy, assistant professor Martin Krampf, has a track record of poking at how close large language models get to real brain signals. He and his crew, Neil Rothi, Johannes Mayer, Badr al Kamisi, and a few other bright minds landed an oral presentation at ICLR 2025 with this work. Only about 2% of papers there get that honor, so yeah, the community thinks it's spicy. Now, before we geek out on numbers, here's the human brain backstory. When neuroscientists stick a person in an fMRI scanner and have them read sentences, they always see clusters, literal little patches in the cortex that light up for certain language jobs. One blob might kick hardest for verbs, next for nouns, another for syntax as a whole. These blobs aren't random. They sit near each other like neighborhoods in a city. Vision research cracked why that happens a few years back. They threw a keep nearby neuron similar rule into deep nets and voila, you got artificial orientation pinwheels and face patches that matched V1 and IT cortex. The big open question was whether that same wiring cost trick would work for language, which, come on, is way more abstract than pictures of cats. All right, drum roll, Topo LM says it does work. Here's the nuts and bolts version told in plain English so you can flex it at your next meetup without staring at the ceiling for the formula. Picture a regular GPT-2 small skeleton, 12 transformer blocks, each block rocking 16 attention heads, and every hidden layer has 784 units. Instead of leaving those 784 units floating in math space, the EPFL crew nailed each one onto a 28 by 28 grid, so every artificial neuron owns a little XY coordinate. That trick alone doesn't create order though, so during training, they toss in a second objective besides the classic next token prediction. They call it a spatial smoothness loss. Conceptually, it's simple. If two units are grid neighbors, the model gets a tiny slap on the wrist whenever their activations aren't correlated. If they're far apart, nobody cares how different they act. The math behind that slap is literally one half times one minus the Pearson correlation between who's close and who fires together. But honestly, you can just remember, closer units, more alike. How heavy is that extra incentive? They crank in a weight of 2.5 tuned after an admittedly painful hyperparameter hunt. So the model cares about geography without tanking its language skills. Then they feed the beast 10 billion tokens from the fine web edu corpus, which is basically an educational slice of the internet. Painting runs five days straight on four NVIA 100 GPUs, the 80 gig monsters, not the baby ones, and early stops once the validation loss refuses to drop. Result, the topographic model ends with a cross entropy of 3.075 and a spatial loss of 0.108. For comparison, the control version with geography turned off hits a lower cross entropy, 2.966, which makes sense because it isn't splitting its brain power between two jobs. So does Topo LM actually look like a cortex when you poke it? The team used Fedorenko's gold standard language localizer, 160 grammatical sentences versus 160 strings of pronounceable nonsense. In real brains, that task lights up a whole left hemisphere network. In Topo LM, the same probe paints chunky islands of language selective units across several layers of the grid. Then they push it further, feeding four classic test sets, normal sentences, scrambled word lists, jabberwocky sentences where content words get swapped for fake ones, and scrambled jabberwocky. Every island in Topo LM shows the real cortex response hierarchy. Normal sentences fire the hardest, scrambled words and jabberwocky tie for second, pure nonsense sits in the basement. The non-topographic GPT clone? Its scattered units respond, sure, but the pattern jumps all over the place, so there's no unified story. The real mic drop is verbs versus nouns. Human fMRI gives a Moran's eye a 0.96 for that contrast, meaning neighboring voxels agree almost perfectly on which class they love. Topo LM clocks 0.48 at raw unit resolution, already solid, but when you blur the grid with a 2mm Gaussian to mimic voxel averaging, 
it shoots up to 0.81, practically brain grade. The vanilla control limps at 0.11 after blurring basically random specs. And remember that cool Mosley and Pulvermuller 2014 result. Verb noun selectivity only pops out for concrete words like hammer or kick, not for abstract ones like justice. Topo LM reproduces that quirk, giving 0.83 clustering for concrete pairs, but collapsing to 0.23 for abstract. The baseline stays flat, ignoring concreteness altogether. That's a huge win for modeling semantics, not just syntax. Now you might be thinking, great, but do they break real NLP benchmarks? Good question. They ran three suites. First up, Blimp, which is a brutal syntax quiz made of minimal pairs. Topo LM scores 0.71, five points behind the control 0.76, so yeah, there's a cost. But on glue, sentiment, entailment, paraphrase, the stuff your phone assistant actually uses, Topo LM nudges ahead, 0.68 versus 0.65. That uptick likely comes from the spatial term doubling as regularization. On brain score, which explicitly checks how well model activations predict actual neural recordings, Topo LM posts 0.78, the control 0.80, a wash. In other words, you lose a sliver of textbook grammar accuracy, keep or even gain on downstream jobs, and maintain almost identical brain alignment, all while scoring this gorgeous cortical map for free. The interpretability angle is gold, too. Regular transformers hide everything in huge abstract vector clouds. If you want to know where verb meaning lives, you sift through thousands of units and pray. With Topo LM, you can literally open a heat map and point, that red blob is verbs, that blue blob is nouns. Need to debug why the model confuses run as a verb versus a noun, you just zoom into the blob boundary. That kind of visibility could be a game changer for safety audits, model editing, maybe even neural network IDs down the line. There's also a hardware dream in here. Brains cluster similar functions to save on axon length because long wires cost energy. If Topo LM style layouts become the norm, you could design neuromorphic chips where compute units for verbs and nouns sit physically near each other, slashing latency and power draw. You could call it the linguistic silicon cortex. And on the medical front, those predicted cortical coordinates can guide clinicians. Imagine a stroke patient loses verb production. Topo LM can hint at exactly which subcentimeter patch to stimulate with TMS to spur recovery. Shrimps Group is already partnering with US imaging labs to hunt for clusters Topo LM predicts, but no one's scanned for yet. If those show up, we'll be looking at a whole new synergy between AI and cognitive neuroscience. Of course, it's not flawless, because each transformer layer gets its own grid. You don't have a single sheet spanning all depths, so you can't yet simulate how stimulation in one layer trickles to the next like it does across cortical columns. And Topo LM is still feed-forward. Real cortices loop signals in recurring waves and rhythms, but as a proof, it nails the same wiring cost story that unified vision maps. It's a monumental step. Now you might have heard of a rival concept called Topoformer BERT. That model forces local connections inside each single head attention block and trains with masked language modeling. The EPFL team benchmarked it too. Raw activations showed some clustering, but after proper statistics, only 10% of its units still looked noun verb selective, nowhere near Topo LM's robust islands. The takeaway is local wiring constraints alone aren't enough. You want the global smoothness lens that TDANN vision models use and Topo LM ports to language. Real quick, let me put the math in a single breath so it sticks. The spatial loss at layer K equals one half times one minus the correlation between first, a vector of how similarly every pair of units fires in that batch, and second, the inverse of how far apart those units are on the grid. Do that for five random neighborhoods per layer, multiply by alpha equals 2.5, Add it to the good old cross entropy, rinse and repeat for 10 billion tokens. That's literally the recipe. Simple rule, huge emergent order. So we now have solid evidence that one tidy principle, keep nearby neurons, similar, handles both vision and language. That hints the brain might apply the same trick everywhere from smell to motor control. For AI, it means we don't have to choose between performance and biological realism. We can have our cake and chart it too. Keep an eye out for Epfel's next fMRI results. If they find previously unseen language blobs exactly where Topo LM says they are, 
That's a mic drop moment for computational linguistics. That's it for today's look at this brain-inspired language model. I hope the blend of tech detail and plain talk was useful. If you have questions or want to explore something further, just drop a comment. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.